ensure the safe performance of all authorized activities. Do not destroy vital testing apparatus. Welcome to Game Name Here. Hopefully you've already had a chance to enjoy the offbeat perspective and new game mechanic of Portal. To listen to a commentary note, put your crosshair over the floating commentary symbol and press your use key. To stop a commentary note, put your crosshair over the rotating node and press the use key again. Some commentary notes may take control of the game in order to show something to you. In these cases, simply press your use key again to stop the commentary. Please let me know what you think after you've had a chance to play, as we think we are just at the beginning of taking advantage of this type of gameplay. I can be reached at gaben at valvesoftware.com. Thanks, and have fun! It's absolutely critical that players quickly wrap their heads around what a portal is. We noticed early playtesters grasp the concept much more quickly when they caught a glimpse of themselves through a portal. So we deliberately positioned this first portal to ensure that players were invariably see themselves. Again, welcome to the Aperture Science One of the things we didn't mention the back of the drop, we hope your brief detention for the relaxation part has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that all the fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities. Serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from still alive. Stand back. The portal will open in three, two, one. These frosted glass observation rooms make the player feel as if they're being watched at all times, while keeping the identity of these watchers a mystery. The rooms serve a practical purpose as well, since we often use them as convenient and logical light sources for the test chambers. Portal is effectively an extended player training exercise. We spend a huge portion of the game introducing a series of gameplay tools, then layering those tools into increasingly difficult puzzles. This layering starts here, where we train the button and box mechanic before introducing the more complicated concept of portals. Excellent. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material remains a patient grid, will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the Aperture Science Weighted Storage Cube. Please place the Weighted Storage Cube on the 1500 megawatt Aperture Science Heavy Duty Super Colliding Super So you never kill them or destroy objects within a portal that's closing. Instead, we either push or teleport objects out of a portal as it closes. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. Each gameplay concept in Portal, so that once players reach this spot, we're confident that they know what a portal is and roughly how it works. Early versions of the game let players stumble through the beginning, without always understanding what was going on, which really compromised teaching new concepts. The puzzle you just finished was designed so that stumbling around will almost always lead to a dead end. Completing the puzzle requires walking through a minimum of five portals in a specific order. This kind of gating 
in which a solid understanding of key gameplay concept is required for success, helps standardize the learning curve of the game tremendously. You're doing very well. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which the may, in similar cases, emancipate the animals from the female and deep. We introduced a mandatory pause in the action, what we call a gate, to help ensure that players stop and notice the portal gun making the blue portal. The particle effect and a loud noise help draw their attention. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most this importantly, room is to make under no circumstances, that should you be with the color of the portal. Playtesters often assumed that orange portals were exit only, so we created this puzzle to force players to enter an orange portal. When rendering the player's view through a portal, we must render a separate image using a virtual camera which looks out of the opposite portal. To obtain a correct image and efficient rendering performance, we render only what is visible through the limited field of view of the opposite portal and exclude objects which lie between the virtual camera and the plane of the opposite portal. Well the done. Remember, the Aperture Science Bring Your Daughter to Work Day is the perfect time, time to have her tested. They provide a clearly identifiable endpoint for each test chamber, while also addressing the more practical problem of how to keep players from portaling across level loads. We eventually integrated the Fizzlers into several of our puzzle designs. purposes, there's generally just one correct solution to these early puzzles. The original version of this room didn't have the glass barrier. Playtesters would often stand on the button to open the door and then shoot a blue portal through the opening, bypassing the box entirely. Since this puzzle was meant to illustrate the relationship between boxes and buttons, that solution, while clever, was a failure. So we added the glass barrier to prevent it. Later in the game, however, the puzzles become more open-ended. Performance of all several iterations to achieve the right balance of performance and correctness. Because portals can be placed virtually anywhere in the game's environment, the physics system had to be modified to allow dynamic changes to its representation of colliding geometry, such as the walls and floor around this box, and any objects which may lie on the opposite side of the portal. Initial implementations of this dynamic collision generation system could take up to one half of one second, or 500 milliseconds, to compute the correct collision. This may not sound like a long time in everyday life, but this pause during the portal creation was quite noticeable in the context of a game. Ultimately, we designed a system that creates temporary hybrid physics environments in bubbles around the portals, using less accurate collision than that produced by Source's standard collision generation, but was accurate enough in practice and reduced the time to create dynamic collision representation from 500 milliseconds to just 10 milliseconds, which is an imperceptible pause during portal. Once again, excellent work. 
is part of a required test protocol. We will not monitor the next test chamber. You will be entirely on your own. Good luck. versions of Portal featured more detailed, cluttered environments, much like Half-Life 2. We quickly realized that unnecessary objects scattered all over the place distracted players to the safety, point where it actually not destroy to be testing apparatus. So we simplified the art style to favor clean, focused test chambers. The modular approach we settled on makes it look plausible that the chambers can reform dynamically on these pistons. A required test protocol. Our previous statement suggesting that we would not monitor this chamber was an outright fabrication. Good job. As part of a required test protocol, we will stop enhancing the truth in three, two, Make it easy to identify at a distance. To make puzzles deeper than just teleporting to the exit, we had to include surfaces that won't hold the portal, which are formally introduced here. We experimented with several surface designs before we settled on this one, whose visual noise and reflectivity make, make it easy to identify at a distance. These scaffolds ran on electrified tracks, but crafty playtesters would hop along the rails to the exit, bypassing the puzzle entirely. We tried to solve this by killing players as soon as they touched the rails. That solution ended up being too much of an overcorrection, as even skilled playtesters were getting frustrated by these one-hit kills in the more complex puzzles later in the game. Making the scaffolds run along immaterial beams of light solved both problems. Now use the Aperture Science Unstationary Scaffold to reach the Chamber Lock. Consequence for failure. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck! Even though layering player training was a design goal from the start, we still ended up introducing some concepts too quickly. For instance, this used to be the first energy ball redirection puzzle. 
Playtesting revealed that this puzzle introduced too many new concepts at once, which ended up frustrating a lot of playtesters. In response, we inserted two test chambers before this one to make the energy ball redirection training more gradual. We previously talked about how we handle static portal collision, but collision with moving objects on the other side of a portal is a completely different and equally hard problem. Walking onto this scaffold was a very iffy proposition for the first few months of development. We solved the problem of colliding with these dynamic objects by cloning the objects from one portal to the other and strictly controlling what objects are allowed to collide with each other and how they're allowed to collide. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing report, followed by death. Good luck. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck. Please note that any appearance of danger is merely a device to enhance your testing experience. The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. For the first few months of development, we rendered the views through portals to two off-screen textures. This approach was easy to implement and was compatible with a wide range of graphics hardware. Unfortunately, this method was incompatible with anti-aliasing and consumed a large amount of video memory in order to handle recursive views through several portals. Because the enrichment of these center we switched to a system which for this clearly broken test chamber with the aid of the stencil buffer to isolate pixels corresponding to a given portal. This is a more effective scheme because it is compatible with anti-aliasing and does not consume any additional video memory for off-screen textures. Because our Once again, the Enrichment so Center it offers its most sincere apologies on the occasion of this unsolvable test environment. The design is essentially a balance between round objects and sharp objects. The sharp objects representing background elements and the round objects, such as doors and movable props, comprising our points of visual interest. Frankly, this chamber was a mistake. If we were you, we would quit now. Fantastic. You remain resolute and resourceful in an atmosphere of extreme pessimism. Portal momentum ended up being the hardest concept to convey. For this series of puzzles, which went through more design iterations than virtually any other part of the game, we introduced the idea of redirecting your momentum using portals slowly, step by step. We even have the AI voice pretty explicitly explain the elements of the puzzle, something we avoided throughout most of the rest of the game. Using gravity to fall into one of the portals so that you come rocketing out the other portal, a skill we call flinging, was another difficult concept to train. We designed a specific visual cue, a pushed out concrete block with checkerboard tile above a pit, to indicate to players that it's time to use the fling maneuver. Repeated several times, this cue helps players associate pushed out concrete slabs with flinging in much the same way that players learn to associate cubes with buttons. Spectacular. 
You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. Originally, these exit portal surfaces were static geometry in the final position, but playtesters stubbornly refused to look up to find them. This is another example of the classic game design problem of coaxing players to look up. By putting the portals on moving pistons, we were able to start them in a position that players were more likely to see. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity, is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. always provide useful advice. For instance, the floor here will kill you. Try to avoid it. We found that rather than looking into portals to see where it went, playtesters would often leap blindly to their doom. In response to this observation, the moral of this puzzle is, look before you leap. The safe orange portal is out of the player's view from this balcony. That forces them to peer through a portal to see it which trains players in their remote viewing capabilities of portals. Originally, a weighted button was used to open the far door, but playtests were so strongly associated boxes with buttons that they'd get stuck searching hopelessly for a box. We changed the big button to a pedestal-mounted push button thus removing the box association. But playtesters still had trouble realizing they needed to shoot a portal through the door. Adding a ticking timer sound when the door was open cued players that the puzzle expected them to act during that time, which solved the problem. This room is designed to build anticipation for the big moment when players finally get the fully powered portal gun. The puzzle tab brings you in a circle around the device so that it's virtually always in sight, right up until you grab it.
player training doesn't always stick, especially after the introduction of a big new concept. For instance, after they had acquired the fully powered portal device, the testers often forgot about the fling maneuver. Since it's such an important skill, this puzzle is designed to reintroduce the idea of flinging. placeholder art to our final visual design, this was the first level to get a facelift. We chose this map because it had many of our gameplay elements integrated into a relatively small space. The test chamber art direction was designed to make everything appear purposefully placed. The simple design helps focus players on the puzzles. It also provides a nice contrast to the later, much less sterile behind the scenes environments, which contributes to a clear sense of progression. This is the first map in which we experimented with solving the puzzle in as few portal placements as possible. We tried to fit that concept into the story mode, but were never quite able to sell it. Instead of abandoning the idea altogether, we added the concept to a series of post-game challenge maps. test protocol, we can no longer lie to you. When the testing is over, you will be missed. A problem we came across with virtually any puzzle involving boxes and doors was that the players could portal the boxes to the other side of the door, thereby trapping themselves in a room with buttons but no boxes. We set up special triggers to detect and handle these cases, and then added the box delivery tubes to ensure players could always be supplied with the required tools. A 
few playtest groups. All subjects intended to handle high-energy gamma leaking portal technology must be informed that they may be informed of applicable regulatory compliance issues. No further compliance information is required or will be provided, and you are an excellent test subject. A few playtesters put a portal on the floor here and use the rising stair pit to skip the rest of the puzzle. We'll usually rework a level if playtesters discover a way to bypass chunks of the puzzle too easily, but in this and a few other cases where skipping ahead arguably takes more skill than solving the puzzle properly, we let the ninja solution stand. This is a great spot to appreciate the recursive nature of portals. If you place a portal on each side of this hallway, you'll notice the portals seem to go on forever, similar to the effect you get in the Hall of Mirrors. In actuality, we support a maximum of nine recursive portal views without any chain of portals. We achieve the impression of infinite recursion by copying part of the previously rendered frame onto the final portal in the recursive chain. It's not perfect, but it's inexpensive and effective. Design this room to draw the player's eyes to the box. The light from the observation room casts horizontal shadows that point at the box, which is directly lit by a warm light from the ceiling. This warm light helps the box stand out against the predominantly cool test chamber lighting. The varying size squares of the off-limit surface also help direct the player's attention upward. Center is committed to the well being of all participants. Cake and re counseling will be available at the conclusion of the test. Thank you for helping us help you help us all. This particular section went through several iterations because it's the first place where players are required to perform possibly the trickiest portal maneuver the double fling. Originally, the room also featured an energy ball redirection puzzle. Combined with a new double fling skill, however, it proved to be too much for most playtesters. 
Overwhelmed players tend to not digest new information, so we simplified the puzzle to require only the double fling. To nudge players in the right direction, we also included visual hints such as the previously introduced single fling theme, the pushed out concrete slab with a checkerboard landing zone. Vital testing apparatus destroyed. This puzzle requires players to redirect an energy ball through multiple portal placements. The multiple steps cause many early playtesters to panic and accidentally redirect a ball right into themselves, with deadly results. We redesigned the test chamber so that portals can only be placed in the top half of the room, which solved the problem by generally leaving players out of the ball's reach. This puzzle requires players to redirect an energy ball through multiple portal placements. The multiple steps cause many early playtesters to panic and accidentally redirect a ball right into themselves with deadly results. We redesigned the test chamber so that portals can only be placed in the top half of the room, which solved the problem by generally leaving players out of the ball's reach. We noticed through our playtests that many of our players weren't aware of the fact that you could place portals while falling. Since placing portals as you are falling is essential to accomplishing flings and many other portal tricks, we implemented this puzzle so that the only way to solve it was to use the mid-air placement tactic. It took numerous iterations and lots of tuning before this consistently played well. Perhaps the most important purpose of this final test chamber is to cement the double fling maneuver training. For previous flings, we employed a visual cue, a pushed out section of a wall. In preparation for the more freeform behind the scenes levels, however, we take the training wheels off. To proceed, players must realize they can double fling almost anywhere they want to, with or without hints. Using portals, they can travel long distances in a short step. Originally, we had stairs from the ground level to the upper rooms. Many playtesters, however, were able to run from one room to the other quickly enough to consider it a solution, without ever thinking to use the even easier portal method. By changing the stairs to very slow moving lifts, we were able to level the travel time for all player experience levels, thus making the intended solution more clear.
to the Aperture Science of the Steam Fund for Girls. It's true. Due to mandatory scheduled maintenance, the appropriate chamber for this testing sequence is currently unavailable. It has been replaced with a live fire course designed for military androids. The Enrichment Center apologizes for the inconvenience and wishes you the best of luck. For Portal, we wanted to create a turret that was different from the Vital different testing like apparatus destroyed. Yep. For Portal, we wanted to create a turret different from the traditional Half-Life 2 turrets. The Half-Life 2 turrets are nothing more than mindless modern guys. In Portal, we wanted the turrets to have personality, to be characters. The first step was the redesign of the look. Once we had the look of the new turrets, they seemed less like menacing machine guns and more like cute robots. And robots can never really be cute until they are talking robots. So the next step was creating the vocal characteristics of the turrets. Working with Ellen McLean, we settled on an innocent sounding voice with dialogue to match. This juxtaposition of killing machine and innocent, non-aggressive personality ends up making the portal turret a memorable character. Even though we didn't want portal to be too combat heavy, we wanted to add at least Vital a light testing apparatus destroyed. After a few less than successful attempts to actually realize this light combat concept, we settled on turrets as a good compromise. The turrets can be defeated with tricky portal maneuvers but they're also susceptible to a more straightforward berserker approach. Portal tells a simple story, we created a lot of backstory for Aperture Science, for its employees, for its rivalry with the hated Black Mesa, and for where all of this fits into the cosmology of Half-Life. This first Portal game doesn't reveal all of it, but we crammed a lot of little details into the environments. This area, for instance, called the Ratman Den, hints that there may be other people trapped in the facility.
There you are. Well done, Android. The Enrichment Center once again reminds you that Android Hell is a real place where you will be sent at the first sign of defiance. Three, two, one. This weighted companion cube will accompany you through the test chamber. Please take care of it. We designed this hall so that players had to use a box as a shield, but many playtesters read it as an avoid the energy ball timing puzzle and simply left the box behind. We solved this in large part by having the AI talk about the box. A lot. Once the dialogue went in, playtesters went from routinely abandoning the box to never wanting it to leave their side. Since we weren't going to make the players lug a box around for the rest of the game, we had a scene at the end of the level where the players are forced to kill the box. The symptoms most commonly produced by enrichment center testing are superstition, perceiving inanimate objects as alive, and hallucinations. The enrichment center reminds you that the weighted companion cube will never threaten to stab you and, in fact, cannot speak. Vital testing apparatus destroyed. The Enrichment Center reminds you that the Weighted Companion Cube cannot speak. In the event that the Weighted Companion Cube does speak, the Enrichment Center urges you to disregard its advice. Companion cube cannot speak. In the event that the weighted companion cube does speak, the enrichment center urges you to disregard its advice.
companion cube cannot speak. In the event that the weighted companion cube does speak, the enrichment center urges you to disregard its advice. did it. The weighted companion cube certainly brought you good luck. However, it cannot accompany you for the rest of the test and, unfortunately, must be euthanized. Please escort your companion cube to the Aperture Science Emergency Intelligence Incinerator. The awful end of the companion cube serves a dual purpose. It adds a lot more sinister character to our already pretty sinister AI while simultaneously training the player to use the incinerator, a key component of the final level. The training has a nice dramatic payoff, since players later get to avenge the death of their Rest assured that an independent panel of ethicists has absolved the Enrichment Center, Aperture Science employees, and the Enrichment Center has been absolved by the subjects of any moral responsibility for the companion cube euthanizing process. The awful end of the companion... You euthanized your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject on record. Congratulations. the actress who plays Gladys, Ellen McClain, with the computer-generated sound file. She'd mimic it, and then over the course of several takes, adjust her performance to clean up any words that were unintelligible in the computer version. For instance, here's a line as Ellen delivers. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. Once the recording was done, we processed all the dialogue to give it an extra computer edit. Here's that same line as it appears in the game, with the pitch constrained, pitch modulation suppressed. Okay. Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test.
the experiment is nearing its conclusion. The enrichment center is required to remind you that you will be baked, and that there will be cake. As an actor, you know, you come in, you do what you're told, you want to make your money, and sometimes you get good direction and sometimes you don't get good direction, but it doesn't matter, and you certainly don't tell the production team any of this. But you come in and they'll, you know, they'll give you a, a lame line reading, and you're supposed to find some emotional value in that. But this is not what this team did. They would come in, for example, Explosively indignant. That's a wonderful direction for an actor. So, I must say that the production team won me over. Because so often, I get bogus direction. But this time, I was actually directed and had fun at all the session. the device in the equipment recovery and the decisions feels much more fundamental. Enrichment center regulations require both hands to be empty before any cave. Between puzzles that aren't time-bound can be more